there's a new way to screen for cervical cancer with self-collection. People can take a sample of cells from their own vagina to test for HPV. The FDA recently approved this for use in providers' offices. There's no pelvic exam, stirrups, or speculum involved. Research has shown that the results are just as accurate as when samples are collected by a clinician. Self-collection has the potential to expand testing to other healthcare settings and reach underscreen populations. I'm Martha Kempner with the American Sexual Health Association and the National Cervical Cancer Coalition. We recently asked two experts, Barbara Moshitsky and Jennifer Smith, who have been involved in the research around HPV self-collection for many years, to explain this new method to us and how it might help us reach the goal of eliminating cervical cancer. Thank you for joining us today. Can you tell us um, what you do and how you've been involved in HPV uh, self-collection research? Certainly. Um, so I'm Barbara Moschitsky and I'm a pediatrician and I'm currently at the University of California, Los Angeles. And I have been doing research now along the HPV fold for around 40 years. One of my interests has always been self-collection for samples. Uh, for example, we did a study, I would say 30 years ago, where we offered HPV testing and basically using a cotton swab. And we asked them to insert the cotton swab into their vagina and we tested them for HPV. And we looked for attitudes about how women felt, um, knowing that they might be positive for HPV and, you know, explaining to them even earlier that the majority of women would clear it. We also did a natural history study where we actually, um, we saw them every six months in person but in between those visits, we would mail them a swab and we would ask them to get a self-test for HPV and to mail it back to us. And now the whole world has decided, wow, self-testing for HPV is a great way to do cervical cancer screening. And it only took 30 years. Yeah, it only took 30 years. And so... <laughs> So I uh, currently am involved in several studies, uh, one here in the United States, looking at self-sampling for HPV screening among women living with HIV. And I'm also involved in other studies that are in lower income countries, um, including some of those in Africa, where doing a pelvic exam is a big deal. It takes a speculum that's very costly. It takes a person, it takes a pelvic table. So suddenly having a study that you can just do, the woman can do on her own in a private setting at her own home and, you know, can get a sample from the uh, vagina is a great cost effective way for specifically lower income countries. And so we're looking at different modes of, you know, screening women in, in those settings. Now that we're talking about self-collection here, what does it mean? You go to your doctor for your cervical cancer screening, and how does it differ from what you used to get? So in the United States, there are two HPV DNA assays that have been FDA approved. This is one thing that's very important in the U.S., that if you're going to do self-sampling, that you use a test that's been shown to actually be valid for HPV testing. We kind of think across the board, ah, all HPV tests are the same. They're not. <laughs> so it's really important that the laboratory, and obviously that's out of your hands, uh, that the laboratory is using an FDA approved test. But that's up to your provider to make sure that that's happening. So normally you have to get on a pelvic table. We all know how wonderful those little stirrups are. And when they say, move your butt to the end and they put a speculum in, that's the traditional way where we got a pap smear because your clinician actually had to look at the cervix and make sure they're taking the sample directly from the cervix that then would go into the media that would be sent off to the pathology lab that would look at those cells under a microscope. So the HPV test totally bypasses all of that. What it does is basically a Q-tip, again, that is going with instructions, will show a woman how to insert the device into the vagina and how to actually obtain the sample. I will tell you, some kits have you go around in a little circle, other kits have you go up and down. It's either way, you want to collect those cells. So why does this work? Well, your cervix 
all the time is shedding cells. That's just normal. Like we know that your skin sheds cells, right? I mean, but you go into the shower and you, you rub them off. In the vagina, we don't recommend ever washing off those cells because it's natural. It's natural that they will just simply shed and douching and all those things. Are we, we consider those unnatural and it messes up with your microbiome, but that's a different story. And so those cells will get caught on whatever device you do, like the Q-tip. And then those cells, you again, will put it into like a little test tube. You close it up and you, you know, right now the two FDA approved tests allow you to do the self-collection in the clinic, but we're not yet approved to have these testing at home. But hopefully within, I think, one to two years, we'll have the data to show that doing this at home is just as good as doing it in the clinic. There are some places online that are selling HPV tests at home. I'm assuming those are not the ones that you were talking about that are FDA approved? Correct. Those are not FDA approved. Like you know, you can buy a lot of things on the web that are not good for you. And so I really would have no confidence on a negative test. Could be that it's still positive, but you don't know what kind of test they're using. And if it's positive, it's kind of like, oh, what if it's a false positive? And I'm now going to have to do all these other things, you know, that I didn't have to do. So I tell most people to shy away from those internet testings. So if I go to my provider, will they definitely have this available as an option right now? No, <laughs> this just got FDA approved. So I think a lot of them have to think about the flow in the clinic and the flow with the laboratory. So once again, you know, the lab has to be set up to do one of those two FDA approved tests, and they have to understand how to actually process the samples because it is slightly different than a sample that's collected by your provider. It goes into a different type of what I'm going to call a buffer or a medium. So again, the, the one your clinician collects is made so it could be a pap smear or and HPV testing. When you collect it, it's not collecting a pap smear. It's only collecting a sample for the HPV testing. So what are the benefits of me doing it myself? Is it just that I don't have to have the pelvic exam that is kind of unpleasant? Yeah. I mean, unless, you know, we, we do chlamydia and gonorrhea testing, right? It's a, it's a swap. That's what we do. We hand women a swab. This is no different. We hand them that. And I would say of my practice, 99.9% <laughs> are like, great. I don't have to have a pelvic exam. You know, your clinic flow is faster. So it's a real win-win for women and for the clinic practice itself. Um, they can collect it even be before they see the provider. You know how a lot of times they say, well, go pee in this cup or here you're due for your chlamydia gonorrhea test. It's now, okay, you're due for your chlamydia gonorrhea and here's your cervical cancer screening test. Bam, it's done. So that's a real plus plus on, you know, clinic flow and just a, a woman's time herself. I think some providers are a little worried about that, though. They're worried that they'll never see another patient in stirrups or that they'll miss something. Is that something that either as a patient or a provider we should worry about? So I'm going to take us back to where we did bimanual exams to look for ovarian cancer. And of course, ACOG came and said, that is a really bad way to screen for ovarian cancer. That's when you would put your fingers in and like push on and the outside. push you on the push side. Push on the inside. Right. That was really uncomfortable. Well, and they said, you really miss almost all the ovarian cancers. And so they went around and said, mm, I don't think so. So, you know, if a woman has a problem, she's got a regular bleeding, she's got a discharge she's very unhappy with, you know, then you do the pelvic exam, then you take a look. But for a woman, she has no symptoms that, you know, you're going to do the screening test that she needs. And that screening test is going to be HPV testing which I know the next question you're going to say, so what happens if it's positive? <laughs> How did you know? That is exactly the next question I'm going to ask. If you're positive, this is where, as I mentioned, this is not collect 
samples directly from the cervix. So if it's positive, now you actually have to come back in and make another appointment to have that pelvic exam. And so they obtain a sample from the cervix. So you might want to say that's a slight disadvantage um, that you have to come back in because you need another test unless it's 16 and 18 positive. If they separate 16 and 18, then you would just go to colposcopy. But if it's positive for those other types or they didn't able to differentiate what it is, you need to come back in and then have that pap smear. By some women, that's a disadvantage. On the other hand, 80 to 85% of women are gonna be negative. So the chances are on your side (laughs) that that test will be negative and you don't have to have another one until I'm gonna say three to five years because- Right. We're not really sure right now, right? What the recommendations are going to be as how frequently you have to do this. Exactly. We're not sure exactly. And so I'm giving the window three to five years. So it is possible that self-collection, that there will be a recommendation that if you use self-collection, you come back a little sooner than if your provider collected the cells. There may be. We're all waiting for those for those guidelines to be released. So you mentioned kind of globally what the benefits could be here in the United States. What are the benefits if we start moving toward a system where we're using self-collection instead of pelvic exams? The first benefit are women who are reluctant to come in to have a pelvic exam. They just had maybe a very bad experience in their life, maybe a history of sexual abuse. Again, I will say both transgender and, you know, non-binary communities also may very feel uncomfortable with that. So this immediately is a great role to have women feel a little bit more comfortable about doing a cervical cancer screening test. They can do it themselves. They can do it in privacy. They have instructions on how to do this. I think also, you know, those individuals who haven't been seen for a while um, or they're not getting care, we could perhaps get a system and said, well, we've not seen you in five years. Would you like me to mail you an, an HPV test? And you can do this at home and mail it back to us. And that's if we get approved for doing home testing. So immediately I see two populations, when those that have missed coming in or for reasons we don't understand and those that feel really just uncomfortable with a pelvic exam. So I think those are really um, populations that are going to benefit. There are going to be women who just say, I've had a gynecological exam, a pelvic for the last 40 years of my life. And I want someone to be looking in there, making sure everything looks okay. So I think we're still going to have, you know, that option for women who in fact would like that. But on the other hand, a woman's like, you know, I really don't have time to see my doctor. I just want to get my lab test done. And that's going to include HPV testing, maybe chlamydia and gonorrhea, depending on your age. You go in and you basically have a lab visit. You don't even need to see your doctor that day. And then you make, you know, a a visit with your doctor a month later when they have all the test results, right? Don't we love it when we can just talk about our test results and we come in first to get them? So I see lots of advantages to this whole process. So do you think that when this becomes more widespread, we'll be able to do it in other places? So it wouldn't be your gynecologist's office. Maybe it would be your primary care office or urgent care. I actually think this is going to first go out in your primary care office. This is where it's really going to take charge. Your gynecologist, for all sorts of reasons, may prefer (laughs) uh, to do a gynecological exam, where I think in primary care, they're really used to doing screening tests, right? This, This is what your primary care person does, right? They screen you for type 2 diabetes. They take your cholesterol. They, you know, screen you for hypertension. These are all screening things they do. So they are really good at it. And so I think the first rollout is going to be in a primary care setting. I'm actually thinking about my primary care doctor who I really do like, but I sometimes refer to her as an air traffic controller because she does all these things. She's like, and I'll ask her a question like, you know, that's not my expertise. I really need you to ask your gynecologist. She likes to send me other places. Well, and again, there's a point where you you need to know what you don't know. And so, you know, I think the HPV testing will be pretty much self-explanatory on what is the next step. And if that primary care perfect 
um, provider doesn't do speculum exams, well, then you're going to be referred to a gynecologist. If they do, then they can do the triage test. And then if you need referral, you get the referral. There's, again, rem reminding ourselves, your primary care person can prescribe a mammogram. They can prescribe an HPV screening test. I just want to ask you, you have been working on this for, as you said, 40 years, and it's finally becoming a reality in this country. How do you feel about that? I think it's great. I remember I was one of the first proponents, like, why do we do pap smears? They're they're negative when they're really po they're supposed to be positive. They're not grace test. And, you know, I said, why would you look for disease until you know that the infection is there. It's kind of like, you know, we first look to see if you've got hepatitis C, and then we do blood work to see if your liver functions are okay. You know, this is great that number one, we're going to HPV testing. I feel, wow, even though <laughs> I feel kind of good. I said this, you know, 25, 30 years ago, and we did self-testing 25, 30 years ago and felt really good about it. It's just really cool to kind of see all of this, you know, evolve to where it's now guidelines. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for all of the work that you did to get us to this place. And thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. And, and of course, it's a lot, a lot of other people's work. So I'm, I feel I'm a drop in the bucket on that one. <laughs> anyway, again, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more about HPV screening with self-collection, visit the NCCC website at ncccc-online.org.